As far as any religion goes, Norse paganism by far has the most intrigue and darkness surrounding it, capturing the attention of people across the globe, whether through TV with shows such as Vikings and The Last Kingdom, or via reading and learning about the adventures and beliefs of the Norse Vikings. The Vikings in particular were renowned for their superstitions and the stories they would tell others depicting all sorts of gods, creatures and spirits many of which were described as malevolent and villainous beasts to be fearful of. These stories served as theoretical explanations to life and death, providing guidance and reason to the individual in a time before science. But since the days of the Vikings, these sagas have become an important staple in Scandinavian identity. Many of the creatures depicted are extremely unusual and have interesting and creepy stories behind them. So here are five examples of the most spine-chilling creatures in Norse mythology. Now before we get into this video, do you remember those RPG games from the 90s that everyone loved? While well, we've been finding ourselves travelling back in time with the Vikings, playing the truly fantastic strategy game Vikings War of Clans. This has an old school feel of 90s gaming nostalgia and it's done on an epic scale. With its high quality graphics and 3D animations, we benefit from the most realistic atmosphere I've ever experienced in this gaming genre. Even more impressive is that there are around 20 million players who also enjoy the game, so why not have a go at forging new alliances and competing in some of the awesome live events? Help support my channel by downloading Vikings for free from the links in the description box or pinned comment, and get the special bonus of 200 gold coins and a protective shield, which will be extremely useful for the start. Don't miss out and click on the links in the description and in the comments to get going and support this video's sponsor. Jormungand In Norse belief, Jormungand is a giant sea serpent who lives in the deepest depths of the ocean of Midgard and is perhaps one of the most famous and evil creatures in Norse mythology. Jormungand was the middle child of the giantess Angabua and Loki the evil and convincing god known as the Trickster. The name Jormungand literally translates to huge monster, and he was just that, with dark, evil eyes, a tongue made of green in colour due to his potent venom, and a tail so long it encompasses the entire world of Midgard, the name given for the earthly world. In Norse mythology, Jormungand has a key role in Ragnarok, the Armageddon event, which is to occur after the deaths of the gods in battle and lead to the end of the world. Following Loki's betrayal of the gods to evil, Odin punishes him by casting his son Jormungand into the ocean of Midgard, which was believed to be so cold that he wouldn't be able to survive. However, Jormungand acclimatized and it's said in the sagas that over the years he grew so large that his tail was responsible for holding the world of Midgard together. Jormungand was discovered to be alive first by Thor while on a fishing trip when he grabbed onto the ox head bait Thor was using and almost dragged Thor into the ocean, where he would have drowned. Fortunately, Thor's ship hand was able to cut the rope before the boat capsized. It is said that Ragnarok will begin when Jormungand releases his tail to seek revenge on Thor, the son of Odin, and Midgard will begin to fall apart. In what is known as the final battle, Jormungard and Thor will have a ferocious battle on the very beach which he was tossed into the sea thousands of years before, and Thor will slay Jormungard only after being bitten by the venomous serpent and dying, causing the collapse of the balance between good and evil. Nidhogg Nidhogg is a ferocious and horrific dragon in Norse mythology, which has gone down in Scandinavian folklore as a notorious villain. Nidhogg is described in Nordic poems as a vicious and bloodthirsty creature of hell who has only one desire, to wreak havoc and slaughter every man, woman and child of Midgard. However, it is told that he is unable to do this, for he is trapped below the surface, in Nastrond, a hellish place where all those who have committed the worst crimes of Nordic society are sent, which included murderers, thieves and adulterers. This is reflected in many Norse paintings, where he is depicted often as being trapped by a tree that is seen as responsible for providing all of Earth with life. Instead to survive, Nidhogg is said to slaughter and devour those sent to Nastrond every night to cause eternal suffering, waiting for his moment to escape. 
The Vikings believed that it was only a matter of time until Needhog would be able to gnaw through the thick roots of the Tree of Life and break through to the surface, said to likely coincide with the beginning of Ragnarok. When this happens, they believed that the extent of the damage to the tree caused by Needhog will be so great that the tree will collapse, causing all life on Midgard to perish, as the gods fight in the final battle of the Nine Worlds in Norse pagan beliefs. The stories and descriptions of Needhog in folklore was found so frightening by the Vikings that it would deter many from committing any crime, which would surely send them to Nostrand, a world seen as the worst place one could possibly be in. Vord Vord is not the name given to a single beast, but is the name for what the Norse believed were guardian spirits, translated into English as warden spirits, for they live with the sole purpose to follow and protect the human being they have been assigned to. In Scandinavian and Germanic culture, it's believed the Vord is invisible to humans, for they are of another world which we do not have the ability to see. Similar to the idea of different dimensions, Therefore, no one knows exactly what they look like, but it's believed that despite this, the Vord is always with you, similar in a sense to angels. One creepy belief the Vikings had of Vord was that occasionally they would purposely do little things to show they were still there following, such as brushing your hand or touching your back, and could even appear as a ghostly apparition in the form of an orb of light, which was their explanation for paranormal sightings. It's said that Vord might choose to do this in order to cause drastic change to their being's life, or even just to confuse and scare the individual. Though good spirits generally, Vord still had the ability to be evil, and it was believed that they were able to influence the course of someone's life, whether for good or for bad. So it was down to the Vord to be good-hearted for the human to also be good-hearted. It's an eerie belief to think that controlling your own life is just an illusion, and you are in fact completely at the mercy of a spirit you can't see, especially when you do not know whether their intentions were good or bad. It's thought today that the Vikings used the idea of Vord in a similar way that we believe today in the psychological of good and bad conscience, an interesting and advanced concept for people to have had so long ago. Kraken whether through folklore or films like Pirates of the Caribbean, we have all heard of the legendary Kraken, a gigantic and dangerous squid-like sea monster which is capable of destroying entire fleets of ships with its deathly tentacles. It is somewhat forgotten that the Kraken is actually the creation of Scandinavian folklore, as the Vikings were seafaring tribesmen who were extremely superstitious about what lurked in the deep and cold ocean surrounding them. However, during the days of the Vikings, Kraken was used as a much broader term to describe any kind of enormous sea monster, back then depicting more like whales than squids. It's not believed that Kraken were evil beasts on any religious dimension, but were simply monsters so large that they could not control their own strength. This is how Lingabark and Hafgufa, the two most infamous Kraken of Norse mythology, gained their notoriety as the most feared beasts of the sea. Lingbakar is described as the largest whale to ever live, but Hafgufa is said to be the largest sea monster to ever exist. It was said that together, the pair would surface to the water in the presence of ships and bait sailors into believing that they had found land, for their backs were so large that they seemed to be islands. After the sailors would land and disembark from their ships onto the back of one of the beasts, they would resubmerge and drown all of the unsuspecting sailors. The only written accounts of this is in the sagas of Orva Og, a legendary Viking warrior of the sagas set in Greenland. The story goes that during an exploration exhibition in an attempt to create a settlement on Greenland, he and his men saw island's rocks appear in front of them after days without seeing land, and they were instantly convinced it was in fact two small islands, as one of them appeared to have heather growing on the land. The Viking, confused and suspicious, ordered the men to sail past the island, but later decided to send a ship of five men back to explore the peculiar islands. As men returned, they came to dock, but the two islands sank into the water before they could land. They later came to the conclusion that they had in fact seen krakens, and if they had landed earlier, it would have surely sealed their fate at the bottom of the deep sea surrounding Greenland. Pesta. 
Pester was an evil and malevolent witch of hell, which took the form of a disheveled old lady with a crooked black ghostly pale face, scraggly grey hair and white eyes. She dressed in a long black cloak and always carried a rake or a broom with her. Across the entirety of Scandinavia, it was known that if you were to see Pester approaching your town, you were already dead. For Pester was the Nordic personification of the Black Plague of the 14th century, seen in her name meaning pest, referring to the rats which carried the fleas with plague with them and spread it from town to town. In Norse folklore, it's believed that wherever Pester went, she would take the plague with her, fulfilling her task from hell to decimate the entire population. Pester was so feared for Scandinavia was hit particularly hard by the Black Death, with an average of a third of the Scandinavian population succumbing to the disease. Norway, however, suffered from the plague the most due to the main trade ports being situated there, losing over half their population. In Scandinavian folklore, it's told that when one sees Pesta approaching a town, you must look at what she is carrying. For if she held a rake, some would survive passing through the teeth of the rake, but if she was seen carrying a broom, the entire town would perish. The act of creating tales out of hardships, such as with Pesta, was a common occurrence in the Norse world, for it would help them explain their suffering and ill luck, and also mean that the horrors of the event would never be forgotten. So that's five of the creepiest creatures in Norse and Scandinavian folklore. Thanks for watching, we hope you've enjoyed this video, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.